2018. It's crazy to think that the year is almost over. 2018 saw a decent number of announcements, and I've had a fair share of game experiences myself. It is now that I can stop and reflect on what has and what will come. It's almost overwhelming. It's mind-numbing to think that video games will only be getting bigger from here, and so will our expectations. With the PS5 demo dropping, I am left almost speechless. I feel like the PS4 and Xbox One came out only a few years ago, and here we are getting ready for the next wave of video game platforms. What will the future hold for us? Games are becoming much more evolved and complex. Like beings. Living. Breathing. Challenging. Breathtaking creatures. While I look ahead, I also look back and remember. I feel like in general, the Dreamcast introduced some of the most memorable gameplay experiences that have yet to be replicated, at least for me. Yes, many games that have come after the Dreamcast have left impressions, but none quite like what I've experienced on this console. Shenmue 1 and 2 Remaster is a gem for the history books. I feel this is a rare glimpse into the world of the Dreamcast. How many people had the chance to experience this the first time back in 2000? This game is credited to have popularized quick time events as well as the open world concept. This is the only series I can think of with this much time passing between releases. Shenmue 3 is slated for 2019. Many of us who have followed the series are that much older now. Some other notable Dreamcast games are Space Channel 5 with its colorful environments, a heroine you control with commands a la Simon Says in a super ridiculous fun story. It's ooh la la bitch. Michael Jackson even made a cameo. The game was pure CGI and had some great looking environments for the time. Secondly, Illbleed was another title that was over the top and inspired by B-horror movies. Though the tone was supposed to be comical, I found it a little disturbing. Granted, I was 13 years old at the time. Enter Eriko and her horror movie loving delinquent friends. For the hell of it, they decide to enter a theme park where you travel through the works of a gory movie director. They go for the chance to win $100 million, but there's a catch. Everything tries to kill you. Tell me this isn't the most fucked up disturbing boss fight here. You're helpless and just have to run. Then there's D2. This is one of the strangest titles I've ever played with a message that I'm not quite sure I understand. To start, here we have a woman named Laura who's on a plane that crashes in the Canadian wilderness after being struck by a meteorite that's summoned from on board by a cultist acolyte. Things only get weirder from here. The game touched on some rather deep subjects and had some interesting gameplay mechanics. What's most memorable to me is, as Laura having your mother tell you to kill her after you just met her and found out she's actually a giant computer shaped like a woman's legs in stirrups. Yeah, it's a lot to take in and it definitely left an impression with me. I could go on with more Dreamcast games, but I want to also talk about this year's games. If you haven't checked out Remothered, I recommend it. Remothered is from an Italian developer and the game certainly is reflective of this with its art style and presentation. I felt like I was playing an artsy horror film at times. The game environments are rendered quite beautifully, and what I loved most was the use of iconography, which sets a deeper colored mood for the game. Visually, I consider this an art piece, which is one to be experienced. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. What can I say about this one? 
I'm happy to have been able to experience a new chapter in the franchise. However, I felt this game didn't hit me as hard as Rise of the Tomb Raider. The environments were much more expansive and detailed. The characters were modeled and rendered quite well. The story, however, was less memorable. It's now December, though I completed the game and bought the season pass. I've yet to play the first of the DLC. The calling to go back isn't as strong. I will eventually, but it's not on my priority list. I'll always be a Tomb Raider fan, wherever it may take Laura, but maybe not this one. There aren't other new games that I was into this year as far as I can remember.